Afghanistan's most senior soldier, back in the country where he trained as an officer and making it his first priority to recognise the foreign blood shed on his soil. No country, particularly uh, you know, the NATO nations, uh, spared any support for Afghanistan, both in blood and treasure. So that's highly uh, respected and appreciated by the people of Afghanistan. So my message to, uh, to the people of Great Britain, to the families who lost loved ones in Afghanistan, I present my condolences and we appreciate their sacrifices and I hope that uh, they realize that they are helping a nation who have uh, been in fight for 35 years uh, and uh, they, I think they deserve your support. They deserve the support of the British families, the British people, and, uh, and they've done that. And uh, uh, we will never forget that. And that's uh, something that will, uh, the legacy of this, uh, your sacrifices will stay in the history of Afghanistan and the hearts of the people. General Karimi served 47 years in his country's military in all its various guises. Now he commands 195,000 soldiers who began, he says, from zero, little more than a decade ago. He's looking to equip that army. We are developing as uh, air support, uh, armoured protective mobility, uh, intelligence development, counter-ID, and of course, uh, logistic issues, these are very complicated issues within any army. So we are trying to develop that and uh, get improvement on that as much as we can to be self-sufficient and be able to defend our country uh, without the direct involvement and support of our friends. Uh, they can give us uh, continuous support and training and also in uh, uh, pro providing some equipment and so on. That will continue hopefully for many, many years but we'll have to do the job ourselves uh, to, to defend our country and fight for our country uh, ourselves rather than uh, having our friends to, to die or get killed on our soil for our cause, you know. In terms of having to do it for yourself and having perhaps to pay for it yourself as well in the future, um, are you a little worried that if your president doesn't sign the invitation for the support and mentoring mission to continue beyond next year, you might be in that position sooner than you might have hoped? We see, I can say that uh, uh, the president or our government, uh, they have realized this uh, importance of these issues. Uh, I am uh, fully confident and uh, optimistic that it will be signed. Looking to a post-combat settling down phase for British troops, the Chief of the General Staffs facing an equipment budget which won't be supplemented by the Treasury's blank checks. The Urgent Operational Requirements Fund, which have given the Army whatever was needed on the double. Yeah, we've benefited hugely from the uh, UOR fleet that has been driven by our experiences in Afghanistan and the sorts of threats we've been facing there. Uh, we now have to spend some of the Army's money to get that into our core program. Those vehicles are being taken off the ground gradually this year. Um, obviously, we're leaving the ones that have to stay uh, throughout the rest of the operation. And we're working them uh, back into... Um, a sort of renovated and standard format to be reissued to our forces, primarily in the adaptable force units that will be part of the lighter end of our operational spectrum. Meanwhile, the, uh, the core program looks good to me, uh, particularly in the armoured vehicle pipeline, which will see the scout program and the warrior upgrade program uh, gaining a lot of momentum in the next three or four years. And then after that, we're hoping we'll be able to buy a uh, util utility vehicle, which will eventually start to replace um, the UOR vehicles like Mastiff, uh, probably about the end of this decade. So we're in reasonable shape, thank you. And do you continue to think that, even though I think you said maybe that we've um, relied quite a lot on keeping things going beyond their lifetime, really? Well, we've become past masters at, uh, at uh, extending the life and utility of our vehicles and adapting, adapting them to functions for which they were not necessarily originally designed. But we're about to get a fresh start. We've got to reach the end of that cycle with the seal, uh, vehicles like Bulldog, CVRT um, uh, going out of service. We'll see Warrior upgraded to a completely new generation, the Scout vehicle coming in, uh, and you, the wheeled utility vehicle will be a uh, departure from what we've tended to do in the past. So I think uh, we're about to go through a recapitalization, a big reset. We've got an awful lot of operational experience to draw on in order to do this. 
a lot of the companies who are here today are giving us um, lots of uh, advice and benefit from their new technologies and subsystems and so on, both in the physical space with armor, also in the electronic space with the uh, architectures and so on. So I'm pretty optimistic we can do a good job here.